Hey guys, one of the things I really enjoy about running this YouTube channel as well as our blog are the many emails I get from many people who all over the place, all over the world who write to say thank you, but also who write to share with me their life challenges and their life problems. Uh, being in my position, I've been able to have visibility over what the challenges are that people have in their day to day when it comes to money. I've also had the opportunity of coaching many people in my own personal capacity. And what you notice over time as you kind of read these emails is that you start to spot specific patterns across various people of different income levels, of different locations, but the common problems are the same. So today I'm gonna to share with you five of the most common mistakes that people make with money uh, so that you can kind of reflect on these and ponder to yourself and consider whether you are also facing these challenges today. I'm even going to share with you some of the mistakes that I've made myself, as well as the mistakes I've seen some of my friends make, which should hopefully give you a lot of insights and principles that you can start to apply to your own life today. My name's Ken of the Humble Penny and Financial Joy Academy. What we do on this channel here is to give you the tips, the insights and the practical hacks to help you work towards a dream life of financial independence and money joy. So stick around because I really want to make this a candid chat, which is why I've brought my camera to be as close as possible so that you can really reflect on this point I'm going to share with you today. If you are facing a monetary or financial problem today, it's very likely to super likely that you are probably facing one of these five most common mistakes I'm gonna be sharing today. So without wasting much time, let's dive straight in and look at these five most common mistakes that people make with their money on a day-to-day -day basis. Things that, by the way, are stopping them working towards achieving their dream goals of becoming financially independent. Okay, so number one is that people make the mistake of lifestyle creep. Right, I'm gonna give you a really practical example. About two and a half years ago, a really good friend of mine came to me in private, okay? He doesn't mind me sharing this story, by the way, and said to me, look, I want you to do a case study uh, on me, assess our lives, I'll give you all my numbers uh, for you to really tell us where we are going wrong. Okay, now here's the int really interesting bit. This friend of mine, he and his wife make 10,000 pounds net income per month, which you're probably thinking, oh man, that's the number I want to achieve in my life. In fact, pretty much everybody I ask how much you want to make always says I want 10K net, right? So this guy is living the dream, right? He's making the money, laughing all the way to the bank. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. On a very good month, yeah, he spends nine thousand pounds on the ten grand. So you're thinking, wait, 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 wait. So you're making ten grand per month, but the most that you can manage to save each month is one thousand, which is ten percent of that seriously large amount of net income. Now, the reason why this happens, of course, is because of lifestyle creep, where people make money, but as they make money, their lifestyle creeps up with the money they're making. So they don't say, for example, well, actually, I think I've got a good life at £2,000 per month. So that if I'm making 10 grand, I'm putting away £8,000. Instead, what happens is that two grand suddenly becomes, well, we could have something else in our life. We could have a brand new car. We could maybe live somewhere nicer than this three bedroom house we've got. And so they move to a bigger house, take on more debt, and they creep up, okay? So in that example, my friend really opened up to me and I was able to kind of offer him some really good recommendations as a friend, okay? If you're interested in that case study, by the way, I'm gonna share a link to it below and above. You need to go and read it for yourself because we go super deep into how he should get out of that problem, okay? Now, here's the principle behind the lifestyle creep that you should really consider bringing, applying to your own life. And the principle is this. If you are able to manage the little that you're making, let's say you are making, uh, you know, 2,000 or 3,000 pounds 
per month and you're doing really well to manage that and put away savings of maybe 20%, 30%, 40% of that money. Then, because you've gotten used to a particular lifestyle, you should then be able to manage much more when much more money flows into your life. If you're able to remember that principle, it will lead you to a place of true riches as time passes. All right, number two is that people borrow and lend money to friends. Now, I've got confession here. So a few years ago, this particular mistake happened to me, okay? So I'll give you the background. So uh, me, my mum, my dad and sisters, um, at the time we're looking to buy a commercial property. So we were buying a building uh, for one of our businesses at the time, okay, which was a childcare business, and we wanted to own our first building. So we were trying to raise some money. We were trying to raise between 250 and 300,000 pounds in cash. And the way we've always operated as a family is that we just split that money up between ourselves, theoretically, and say, well, you go and find 50K, you go and find 60K, you go and find X amount. I had my amount that I had to find. And at the time, I had money locked up in various assets. And then one of my friends at the time had some cash available to him. He had quite a fair bit of cash, in fact. He was doing very well. So I said to him, oh, why don't you, because I'm doing this deal with my, my family, I'm doing this transaction, this thing, we're buying this building. I tell you what, I've got a really interesting opportunity. You lend me £20,000, I'll give you a 12% return after one year, okay? Now, not knowing this, I started to go wrong right from the very beginning. Now, I'll tell you why. In our lives day to day, there are two worlds that we live in all the time. And I learned this after I started to look into uh, this idea of money and psychology. In fact, one of the books that really helped me with this uh, it's this book here that I've recommended a few times called Predictably Irrational. It's a fantastic book if you want to kind of look into this idea of understanding money and psychology. And the two worlds we're living are the world where we have social norms and market norms. I'll explain what I mean. So in the social norms, let's say that you and I are friends. And I came to you and said, hey, how are you doing? How are your kids? Or how's your girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or whoever you've got? Or how are your parents? When I'm asking you those questions, we are operating in the dimensions of the social norms, okay? We're just talking about things that are relational. But the minute I start to say to you, oh, I will give you a 12% return for 20 grand investment, we are now operating in the world of market norms because here we're talking about returns and price and quantity and amount and things like that. So when I was asking my friend, I said, hey, give me 20 grand and I'll give you 12% return in one year, I made a critical mistake between friends, okay? What you should never do, ever do, is get into this scenario where you are almost talking economics and transaction deals with somebody who's meant to be your friend. Because what happened was, the minute I started to communicate in that type of language, he also, because he is a finance guy, started also to communicate and speak in that language. So to him, he was saying things like, oh, Ken, but I need a contract in place. Ah, and I'm thinking, hold on, we're friends. Like, why are you asking me for a contract? But he was actually right in asking me for a contract. But what then happened was, we ended up butting heads. And I ended up not having to uh, borrow that money for that deal from him. I ended up sourcing and selling down some investments and using that money instead. But there was a moral in this story. And the moral was that I had basically left our really good relationship, we had up, which had operated fantastically well in the social dimension and moved that relationship to the market norms, the market dimension. You also see this, for example, when people give people gifts. So if you give somebody a present that you, you handmade at home, you took time to really make it, and it was special to you making it. If you gave it to somebody, it would come across really special because you're operating, you're operating in that social norm and dimension. However, if you said, well, instead, I'm not gonna make you a present, I'm gonna give you 50 pounds or $100 in an envelope and say to you, here it is. That person, when they receive that money, 
will immediately begin to think from a market norm perspective because they'll be able to say, well, actually, 50 pounds, I can't believe they only gave me 50 pounds. My, my hourly rate is X amount. Or they'll be able to start to compare that money to something else, which would mean that the quality of relationship you have with that person will potentially get fractured. Another really ex good example you can apply to your own life, actually extending this, sorry to go on, because a really important topic this, is let's say, for example, that your hourly rate is making this up 40 pounds per hour, making this up, okay? And let's say that I came to you and said, hey, look, there's a charity that we want to help out. Together we can help this charity by moving this sofa on the floor to another building somewhere. You, because it's a charitable endeavor, will say, well, actually, it's okay because it's for charity, I will do it and move that sofa with you to that other building for the charity. But imagine, and bear in mind, you're doing that because you are operating in the social dimension. Now imagine I came to you and said, actually, can I pay you five pounds for helping me move that sofa? You will immediately start to operate in the market dimension because you say, well, actually, no, my hourly rate's 40 pounds. You can't be paying me five pounds for my hour. So you're more likely to say no and find it disrespectful, okay? I hope you're getting this point. Anyway, it's a roundabout way of saying to you, when you are thinking about money and relationships, do not, where possible, borrow or lend to friends and family. And the moral I've taken away from this is that if a friend asks me for money or if a family member asks me for money, I would rather gift them the money than say to them, here's the money as a loan, pay me back, whether it's interest free or whatever, pay me back. No because it, this always leads to problems and people ultimately might not be able to pay you, that, pay you that money back and that then leads to relationships potentially being fractured and damaged over time. Number three is that people are not investing money enough, okay? Now, I will explain this from a different perspective than you might expect me to explain this particular point. And here it is. There is in existence a silent assassin amongst all our lives, something that affects everybody at the same time, but something that a lot of us do not think about or even talk about. That silent assassin is inflation, okay? Now, you might not know what inflation is. I mean, essentially inflation refers to kind of the price increases that you experience when you buy, when you buy goods and services, okay? In this particular country and in a lot of the Western countries, you know, the powers that be aim for an inflation rate of around 2%. Now, that's the kind of official inflation rate, but the unofficial inflation rate, uh, the price increases that you see from year to year in products and services, is actually a lot more than 2%. Now, here's what happens when you make money and you don't actually invest your money. What happens over time is that your money actually erodes in value over time because the purchasing power that your money has reduces as time passes. So for example, you might have a particular amount of money now. As time passes, you find that that money will be able to buy you fewer and fewer things as time passes. And the reason for that is because as time passes, inflation essentially erodes the value of money. And so investing your money, therefore, one of the big goals for investing beyond just achieving your financial goals over time is for you to achieve a return that far exceeds the inflation rate that your money might be suffering as time passes, okay? So this is one of the biggest mistakes that people do not really consider. And they think that by holding their money that their money is safe in a bank account or somewhere. What they don't realize is that that money is actually losing value as time passes. So the big principle to take away from here is to focus on having an ROI mindset, a return on investment mindset, okay? When you make money, you wanna be asking yourself, how can I use this money I've just made to potentially generate a return for myself? Because what most people don't think about is the money flows from one place to another looking for where it will get looked after. By looked after, I mean it's looking for a place where it will generate a return. Number four is that 
a lot of people only live for today. I don't know about you, but when I was around the age of 16, I remember seeing a lot of my uncles in their mid thirties. And I used to think to myself, oh my gosh, you know, these guys are so old. I cannot believe even being in my mid thirties. Guess what? I'm in my mid thirties right now and I still feel young, but that period of 20 years came so rapidly fast, okay? Now, luckily for me, I spent the last decade looking after my life, preparing for my future, and looking after my finances. But believe it or not, a lot of people live today and believe that there is really no future ahead of them. They live purely for today, and that means that all the money they make is essentially there to help them only live for today. And it's no wonder that when things then start to happen in the future, inevitably, a lot of people are unprepared and therefore have no shelter, no security, and no way to actually get out of these problems as they crop up. I've met people in their 40s, in their 50s, some of the people who write me emails who are going through challenges right now as a result of not thinking ahead enough or planning into their future enough such that they are prepared for the inevitable future that will show up at some point in their lives. And here's a question for you. This is a principle I want to really think about. A version of the future will inevitably come in your life. My question to you is, is what version do you want to show up when it shows up? Do you want the current life you've got or do you want a radically different life to the life you've got at the moment? There's probably no answer to that right now, but I know what I would say if that was me answering that question, okay? So you really wanna try and focus on that question today and come up with your answer to that question. If you want a different life to what you are seeing right now, then you've got to begin to make radically different choices and take radically different actions in order to begin to create that life that you desire in the future. Number five is that people rely far too much on debt, okay? So one of the things that really, really gets to me actually uh, is this culture we have in this country and in America and in Canada and places like that where we are made to believe in effect through our culture that being in debt is a normal thing, okay? It's normal for you to have hundreds of thousands of pounds in mortgage debt. It's normal for you to have tens of thousands of pounds of credit card debt because your friends have one or because your neighbors have one or because they talk about it in the news as though it's a normal thing, right? Look at what's happening right now, even right now. The powers that be are encouraging people to take on more debt. Can you imagine that? They talk about debt as though it's free money. It's so casually spoken about, you know, things are, things are uncertain. Here, take some more debt, right? And it really gets to me, and I'm hoping you can see that it really gets to me, because I think most people don't think from this perspective, which I'm gonna share with you right now. So ordinarily, people who work for other people are prisoners to their employers, i.e. you can't, you listen to your employer, you have to do what your employer tells you to do. So already a lot of your liberties are taken away in many regards. Now, you might say, well, actually I make an income, so I offer a service and that's fine. And that's true, but you still answer to your employer. But now parallel to that, and this is what most people don't think about, taking on debt means you are a prisoner to a lender. You cannot get away from that. So what you then see is that around many people's lives, a lot of their personal freedoms are taken away day to day as a result of the choices they make driven by the culture around them day to day. Now here's my question to you, and I really want you to ponder upon this one. What is your strategy for getting back your personal freedoms? What is it? Do you enjoy waking up and living perpetually in debt? I hope the answer is an absolute no, because if the answer is a no, what are you doing to get out of that circumstance today and in the very near future? Think about it. I want you to just ponder upon that 
And remember me asking you that question. What is your freedom strategy? What is the way you are plotting your escape from what I refer to as the financially ordinary life that a lot of us sadly find ourselves in and see as the norm because everybody else is doing it. It's the culture of today. Please don't see living in debt as the norm. Please don't see it as the way it has to be. You can break free from that. We've done it. So can you. Okay, I'm going to put a link below and above to various resources we've created around becoming mortgage free, around paying off debt. Check them out in the descriptions of the video and above and begin that journey towards breaking away from debt. It will take some time. It will most certainly take some time. But if you see it as part of your strategy towards your personal freedoms, getting those personal freedoms back in the future, then you'll be motivated to make debt freedom a reality in your life as time passes. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video today on five of the most common mistakes that people make with money. You know, I'd love to know because I've kept it really real on this video today. Which of those five common mistakes are you making right now? Please let me know in the comments. You know, let's be open with each other. Let's have a chat about it. Let me know in the comments which of those five are you making right now or have you been making recently in your life, okay? I'd love to jump in there and let's catch up and talk about these issues, okay? If you really enjoyed this video, please hit that like button because it really helps encourage other people to check out our channel, subscribe and all that, all those fun things that a lot of YouTubers ask you to do, okay? If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh, as well as the notifications bell which gets you notified when we publish our videos twice a week on a Tuesday as well as a Thursday, okay? Guys, thank you so much for watching. As ever, I love, love creating on this channel and I look forward to seeing you again on our next video. Take care and bye for now.